ask your question. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you. I recently came across your channel and I just love your work. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And I guess my, my big epiphany has been learning about attachment styles. I don't know where I've been all these years. I'm 56, but I finally had a breakthrough realizing the, the avoidant that I dated in the last few months will be my, the very last avoidant I pay any attention to. Okay. So he's agreed to meet with me after, in a few days after no contact for the whole month of April. Okay. And I, you know, I've got kind of two options. One is to say, look, you, you and I have discussed before you understand your avoidant attachment style. The only way I could be with an avoidant is if he agrees to really work on getting towards a secure attachment style. Okay. Other than that, I really just have to go no contact, you know? So can I jump in? First yeah, I mean, off, I don't want to give him an ultimatum, but I want him to understand that I understand his core wounds and his issues because I know he's had a, a lot of abuse in childhood. And okay. like, I get that part. So I want to give him a chance, but at the same time, I have to put myself first. So I have a couple questions for you. So first off, how long have you been dating him? Uh, just since January. Since January. So we're in May, 1st of May. So basically four months you've been dating him. Okay. Uh, I'm going to assume you've been physically intimate with him, correct? Yes, just once. Um, back in early March. Okay. But in, by the end of March, I was realizing that this th th we were out of alignment. So Okay, I have a few more questions. Hold that thought for yeah. a second. I have a few more questions. So how far apart did the two of you live? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. How many times have you physically seen each other in these four months? In the beginning, we were averaging once or twice a week. Once or twice a week. And then, so, um, so for the beginning, so the first two months you saw each other collectively 10 to 15 times. Okay. Then you were physically intimate with each other. And then you noticed that the time spent together started to dissipate. Is that correct? Right. I mean, we had a lovely, okay. he bought me beautiful gift for Valentine's. So we had a okay. romantic Valentine's and then, yeah. And then by the end of March, I asked for no contact until... April 12, because I had some things going on. So I gave okay. him kind of a break, you know, but he didn't contact me for the whole month of April. I was hurt, so, but, you know. Okay, so let me ask you a couple more questions. So A, what makes you think he's an avoidant? And and you, you it made, and the way you described it, he seemed to agree with you. So I'd like to know how he came to that consensus, how you came to that consensus, and how did he come to that consensus? Because we were um, we were texting and um, meeting up with each other, and I started to question. I just felt something was off my intuition, so I started digging, okay. and I was learning about avoidant attachment style. And I had a conversation with him, uh, a couple of conversations actually, uh, okay. one at the end of February, and then one closer into March, and he would. Um, I told him that I was learning about attachment style and he kind of smiled and raised his hand, like, as if to say, yeah, that's me. Okay. So I'm, I'm just want to be clear. He acknowledged it. You haven't told me anything specific other than a lot of words. Okay. Yep. So why don't you give me some specifics of what made you think he was avoidant? What was he doing or not doing for you to come to that conclusion? Give me some specifics. Okay, he would he'd say, hey, let's get together for dinner um, on, you know, such and such, such day. And I'd say, okay. And then I was trying to lean back in my feminine and have him take initiative, right? Okay. And not be on top of him and say, so when, what time, Why, you know? And then I wouldn't hear from him. And then I would text him and say, 
well, I guess dinner's off, you know, have a nice evening. And then he'd say, well, I didn't hear from you. <laughs> okay. And I was like, well, but you asked, you asked me to dinner and then you didn't tell me anything more. Like, I'd love to have dinner with you, but I need a little. By the way, you're that. making it a, by the way, that is not indicative of an avoidant. That actually might be more indicative of an anxious person. He needed some validation from you to confirm that you wanted to be with him. That's not necessarily indicative of an avoidant. That could easily be an anxious person too. He was waiting for you to confirm for him. That actually could be anxious. Well, then later that night he went home and I said, Hey, I'd like to see you. Can we get on, you know, can we have a video chat? And I have an iPhone. He has an Android. So I was trying to send him a Google link and he goes, well, I'm going to take a quick shower. I'll call you when I out of the shower. I said, okay. okay. 90 minutes later, I called him to tell him, you know, let's just, let's talk some other time. And he answered the phone. He's like, oh yeah, I just, I, I decided to take a long bubble bath. <laughs> okay. And I was like, well, okay. I said, you know, I've been waiting for you to call me because I thought a shower would be maybe 10 minutes. And, okay. but I have told him clearly that I, by, by the way, him. this isn't necessarily indicative of avoidant. Okay. This isn't, this isn't indicative of avoidant. I mean, I'm not suggesting that it isn't either. But yep. you've come to a conclusion with not that much data based. Now, what I'm what my suspicion is, he's just not that into you. Yeah. Like that's my real suspicion. This isn't, it's it's too early in the dating process to label him avoidant. Okay. I'm not suggesting that there aren't some traits that might be there. But okay. what you're describing to me is someone who's like, he kind of likes you, but but not he's not that into you. In other words, there isn't enough attraction between the two of you to hook him to want to make an investment in you. Okay, so I, I want you to be careful. Like when, by, by the way, when you, when a lot of people are self-diagnosing things. By the way, I'm not so convinced that your love attachment style is so healthy either. Okay, I'm actually suspicious. I'm actually curious because I'd love to interview you deeper because my gut tells me, and this is just purely projection on my part, my guess is you're an avoidant as well. I have been in the past and I'm working okay. on that. So, okay, yeah. so, so wait, so you're, okay, so you're telling me you're breaking up with someone because they're avoidant, but you said, I've been avoidant in the past, I'm working on it, so you're not secure either. So let me ask you specifically, and it sounds like you're going to end the relationship. What do you plan on saying to him when you talk to him or meet him next? Because you're, it sounds like you're ending it. What's the reason you're giving behind it? Because I really do care about him. And I just want to have a clear communication because I don't want to be avoidant anymore. And I've been more open and more, um, more mindful than ever in the last few months. I have not done any of the anxious, stalky stuff. Um, <laughs> I've always showed up and I'm struggling to balance it with, I don't, I, and I know I've, I've seen you say that you don't really, you're not really a proponent of the women being in their feminine energy and leaning back all the time. Um, but I'm just, a, by the way, let me, let me interrupt you there. Yeah. Please forgive me. I'm just a proponent of both people making effort, okay? You just right. make eff commensurate effort. Commensurate effort. When you're, by the way, I'm gonna tell you something. When a woman leans back, I, I just go the other direction because I feel like they're no longer at the 50 yard line. When you're at the 50 yard line, you've been at the 50 yard line and then you go, oh, I'm gonna go to the 30 yard line because I'm just gonna sit back in my feminine energy. I'm like, you just lost interest in me. I don't go chase you. That's not how I operate. I want someone to meet me at the 50 yard line and I'm meeting them at the 50 yard line and we figure it out. But when you do the, I'm gonna lean back in my feminine, well, it's only gonna work for emotionally unhealthy men or it's only going to work on, you know, you know, fucked up men. <laughs> so maybe leaning back was a mistake. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say yes, out because but I think there's something more indicative. There's a deeper problem between the two of you. A, 
I don't think he's that interested in you. Look at mm -hmm. how old, by the way, how old is he? Just so I have some clarity. He's, I think he's 58. He'll okay. be 59 so, um, next okay. month. And, and how was his heart on when you had sex with him? <laughs> to be honest, it was kind of a, it was, it was a bit of an awkward encounter. Okay. So it, it sounds like he doesn't have much of a libido, sexually speaking, because I mean, and I can only speak from my personal experience. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm in the same age bracket and I still have a radical sex drive. So I, if I want to be with a woman, I want to be with them physically all the time. It sounds like he's not caring or desirous of a physical relationship with you. So then what kind of relationship do you have? Is it like, How's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. I'm thinking about you today. I hope your day is good. Is that the equivalent of this dynamic? No, it's more like, um, you know, we the texting would be to set up and, you know, a meetup, like we'd go out to dinner or a movie or whatever. And do you have a good time when you go out to dinner in a movie? Always, like really deep conversations. Okay. We're in alignment on so many things. He understands. Um, he lived where in an area where I grew up, which is very far from where we live now. And I just told him, I, you know, I feel seen and heard by you in ways that I haven't felt in a long time. Okay. And I think I, you know, I'm trying, you know, and I'm aware of limerence. I've experienced limerence before. So I don't think this is that. I, the trick with limerence is that limerence, as you know, it's it's yeah. uh, being in, or loving or, or perceiving somebody for who they're not. But at the same time, I know I'm just getting to know him for a few months. So I'm I'm leaving gaps because I know I don't have all the information. So I'm basing well, my feelings on I, what I think the potential might be. Yes, it sounds like well, it sounds like the two of you just have more of a friendship. That's yeah. what it sounds like to me. I Matter mean, of fact, yeah. by the way, Denise wrote the exact same thing at the moment I said the same thing. Sounds like a man friend. He just appreciates your female energy, most likely. He's going to, to connect with you at his beck and call, okay? So when it's convenient for him, it's not like he's a commensurate friend. It's more like you are a female person that he will connect with at his beck and call. So mm -hmm. I think... I would say rather than end the relationship, maybe have a heart to heart and say, what do you want? Like, because you, you, you started this conversation with that he's an avoidant. And, but first off, I don't think there's enough data to qualify him as an avoidant. I, I think it's more like there's not enough mutual attraction between the two of you beyond a French platonic perspective. Um, that's my suspicion. So because of that, you're labeling it avoidant when it's really more, there isn't enough attraction between the two of you, uh, or at least on his part. So if I were you, I would want to get some clarity on, on what he wants in his life. And if he wants a fully committed relationship that has a physical sexual component to it, then go find the woman that meets your needs because I'm going to go find the man that meets what I'm seeking. No, I really, I do feel that. And, and that's, I am prepared to, to ask him what he wants because I don't want to make a big mistake here. I don't want to misunderstand because he has been expressing attraction and desire and, um, you know, saying he's a romantic and he's done romantic things. Um, he likes going dancing. Like he's, he's a lot of fun, but he's, he's wicked smart, which I, which really attracts me. I, I like yeah. intelligent people. So I do see there's a potential, but I just don't know if, you know, we're, if I'm just slipping into my avoidant that I don't want to get hurt, but I put myself out there. He's put himself out there a little bit. Um, Can I, I jump encourage... in? Mm -hmm. So you said, I'm going to find out what he wants. Why not get clarity on what you want? I want like, something. No, no, hear me out for a second. A, yeah. get really clear on what you want and make sure that you 
express to him what you want, okay? Like, not with him. I, I want you to view this not what you want with him, what you want in a partner, okay? This has nothing to do with him. This is about, you know, uh, you know, like, for example, I always, you hear my narrative. If you've been watching me a long time, you hear my narrative. I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal, our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. Do you see how that, I, and I, you know, I just curated what I would like it to look like at a very simplistic level. Now it goes much deeper than that, okay? But I put together a framework and I invite everyone to use my framework if it fits for them, okay? So you first have time to get I heard you say that. The first huh? time I heard you the first time I heard you say that framework, a light yeah. bulb went off in my head. So thank you. Okay, for that. talk to me about that. Because I realized that um that might be more of what I want and that I have, I, I can give myself permission to simply say it because I'm getting too old for this guesswork stuff. Yeah. And I really, it, I, I, I got married at 30. It was a okay. short marriage and it, it lasted about a year, but I got a taste of what it was like to finally feel a, like a sense of relief of being out of the dating scene. And I've, I've realized in the last few months that that's what I want. I want to get married. By the way, I just have this strange thought that popped in my head. Um, is he, commu I mean, I, I'm just pondering a thought. So let me play with it for a second. I'm wondering if he's communicating with other women and maybe even sleeping with other women. I'm just, I, I mean, I, it's, I'm not suggesting that's the case. I'm just pondering the thought. No, I'm wondering it. I'm wondering it too. Um, after, after, at the end of April, I think it was, no, at the end of March, he did tell me that he had dinner with a female friend. Okay. And I didn't, res I didn't respond or react to it because we were not, we had never had that exclusive conversation yeah. so i i didn't flip out i didn't freak out i i was disappointed i was a little hurt but i didn't allow myself to to you know to be angry or jealous because he's free to see other people and so am yeah. i and i have male friends that i have dinner with yeah so we just it was just in this really weird in-between stage but if he reaches out to me and sets up a time to meet again, uh, his last text to me was, okay, I'll let you know. And I'm not going to text him again. If he doesn't text me, I, I don't think I need to reach out to him ever again. Well, here's the thing. He's going to reach out to you again. He's going to. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I say that with a 97% accuracy rate. He will reach out to you again um, because he has a belief that you're willing to accept crumbs. That's what I wanted to clarify with him that I'm not wanting to do well, it. Well, then why not just clarify? Okay, so rather than play this game, I'm not going to wait till he communicates with me. Why not you initiate it? Because the thing is, Listen, the likelihood of success in this dynamic is rather slim to begin with, okay? I mean, I it's ridiculously slim. But Jonathan, so what you're saying is I have a chance. I mean, I'm going back to the dumb and dumber, you know, quote, okay? Didn't see it. It's so, <laughs> it's an example. By the way, dumb and dumber for everyone watching is literally an example of how dysfunctional our dating marketplace is and not and has nothing to do with dating or well, it actually has something to do with dating and relationships. Okay. Well, John, can said, I just say can I just say that he said maybe Monday we could meet up? And I said, okay, Monday after five, I'm available. And he said, okay, I'll let you know. Okay. So and he's gonna so bail kind of, on that because that's his his pattern anyway. Yeah. We're um, kind of set up a possible day and time. And I don't well, think but I'm just okay, but I'm gonna say this. Why stew with this? Why not just get on the phone later today with him and have and by the way, lay the rule, lay like I mean, 
why not say, hey, look, this dynamic doesn't work for me, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not, like, why not put some closure and you be in an empowered place to put closure on this? Okay. OK, so just say, hey, there's something really important I need to share with you. Do you have a minute to chat on the phone? OK, initiate it. Okay. Say, look, I've been reviewing this dynamic for the last four years. This doesn't work for me for a variety of different reasons. My suspicion is you might be dating other people. You know, I mean, you know, this has been this doesn't feel like we're actually moving towards anything serious. So I just want to put an end to this dynamic. And I just want to wish you all the best on your journey. Why not just rather than delay it? Why not like, why not be empowered? Step into your sovereignty, step into your power. Oh, those are my keywords. You just, you just hit it. I guess I, these kinds of talks, I, I've always tried to have them in person rather than on the phone. Well, that's just me, but you know, getting it over with sooner. You know, what? I'm going to tell you a little story just to illustrate something. Um, I once worked, I was in the insurance business some 30, 40 years, 35 years ago. And um, we had a, we had a, 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 I worked in the Los Angeles office, but we had a satellite office in Arizona. And it turns out my boss arranged a meeting for the employee in the in the Arizona office to come to Los Angeles. And he says, I'll pick you up at the airport. This is before airport security was a pain in the ass as it is now. Mm -hmm. And he met him at the airport to fire him. OK. Oh, wow. And and I'm like, why not just do that? Over Like, why make the guy fly all the way from Arizona to Los Angeles and then have to get on a plane to go back, you know, knowing he just got fired. Why not just do it over the phone? I mean, I'm just over the year. I'm like, like, listen, you. this is a person, like, why does it have to be in person? You guys didn't have a significant relationship. You had a mediocre relationship at best. Like it was mediocre. It was casual. And I know you had a lot of, you know, intimate conversations with you, but you had a friendship. This can be done over the phone. By the way, does anyone agree with me who's watching right now? Let me know. You know, I just think you can just do this over the phone. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, again, you can do whatever feels right for you. This is how I would approach it. Look, at, there's not enough invested in this dynamic. You only had mediocre sex once. So this really isn't that significant of a relationship, you know, and I get that you have a friendship with them and you can, you can always say, Hey, look, if the, the door is absolutely open, I mean, you can, this is up to you leave the friendship door open. And by the way, everyone is agreeing with me. I agree. Phone, Jonathan, phone, phone, everybody, you know, he, there's no need to do this in person. And in fact, you'll probably fail at it in person. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I anyway. my thing is that I, I do believe in my sovereignty, but I didn't I just wanted to be sure that I was getting subtext and conversation with him where I'm not making a big mistake here. I just sweetheart, I may let me and please forgive that term of endearment, but let me just be clear. The way I've observed most healthy, happy relationships, the way I've observed them, and I'm talking thousands of times, okay? When two people meet, they have a really good connection. And they build on this connection over time. They have physical intimacy. They begin integrating into the, each other's lives. Nothing you've described in this four-month relationship is even remotely indicative of what I've observed thousands of times with most happy relationships. This is breadcrumbing at best. This is friendship at best. This is he's most likely seeing other people, which you've already described that you both have the door open to seeing other people anyway. You're holding out on a fantasy. Okay? Yeah. I just need to wake you up to this. It's a okay. you're you're you have this projection of. But if magic fairy dust drops from the sky, this will all work out. Like you have this fantasy that magic fairy dust is going to change this. 
And, and if you've been watching my channel long enough, I'm talking about individual empowerment. Step into your power right now. End this relationship. Make, your, make a stand for your sovereignty to meet someone where you're actually meeting at the 50-yard line so you don't have to play the fucking lean back in your feminine energy bullshit. You just meet each other on the 50-yard line and you just keep going and, you know, just moving towards getting to know each other better and better and better. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I'm, I'm very grateful to you and I'm grateful to him to help me um, wake up to this because okay. I swear this has got to be the last the last time I'm in this situation, this I want this to be the pattern break breakthrough. Well, uh, as we say in Arabic, inshallah, God yeah. willing, this is your last. You know, the definition of insanity is we do the same thing over and over again, expect different results. But my instincts tell me that um, it's it's for you to make a stand for your sovereignty right now. Okay, Janelle, thank you so much. Can I give you a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug? <laughs> thank you so much. You're very welcome. Wow, this was an interesting conversation, everyone. Um, you know, folks, I'm a big proponent either when two people meet and they begin to decide to explore a relationship, that they do so with some consciousness, okay? Now, I recognize that there's this jostling of position that happens when you're getting to know someone. You, 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 there's a little bit of give and a little bit of pull back and a little bit of give and pull back because it's scary to actually open yourself up to another human being. This is why I've always said it takes about a hundred hours of face-to-face -face time to build the first layer of trust, okay? It takes about a hundred hours of face-to-face -face time, okay? To build the first layer of trust. At a minimum, you know, men oftentimes demonstrate a real seriousness when you've hit 10 dates with one another. Men who are genuinely serious about a relationship, if you've hit 10 dates with them, they're usually moving towards progressing it. However, there are a significant percentage of broken men, um, dysfunctional men, wounded men that just like female company, that will use women, not, not, not from a victim perspective, but they will use women for their own benefit. A woman has to make a stand for her sovereignty, okay? Very early on, he was his actions didn't match his words. She should have just cut that off the second time it happened. You know, um, fool me once, shame on me, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Okay, so in this particular case, by the second time, she shouldn't have entertained, or third time at best, entertained anymore. But Jonathan, we have such an amazing connection. It's so wonderful. And yet at the same time, she's feeling miserable. I, I mean, momentary experiences of great connection is not the same as I feel, I feel good about this dynamic, okay? If you don't feel overall 90% good about the dynamic and you're just holding on to a sliver of that, but Jonathan, it was just, every time we get together, we have these deep philosophical conversations. Well, ladies, I do that with female friends. I do, but if I want a partner, I make, we see each other on dates. We integrate into each other's lives. We have physical intimacy on a regular basis. Okay. Now I'm describing the type of relationship I seek in my life. Many of you are probably okay with mediocre relationships, but just remember, mediocre relationships usually experience a lot of emotional turmoil, and I'm here to encourage something beyond mediocre. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. All right. I really appreciate Janelle. So, hey, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that particular conversation, post a comment below. I'd like to hear all your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And also, if you want to connect with me directly, check out the links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out the books I recommend. Check out my Instagram, all listed below. Okay. Um, Let's see. Brown Kanita says, I enjoy this community. Thank you so much. Um, Jill Collins wants to say thank you, Janelle. We appreciate you. 
Your share helped us, uh, so many of us. So happy to hear that. Betty says, very good conversation. Uh, Annette says, so much great content. First live caller fighting for the delusion. He just not that into you. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's my instincts to say that. Uh, let's see what else here. Let's see what else is here. Bump, 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 bump. 